Greetings. Hello, everyone. It is such an honor and a pleasure to come back and share with you our commemoration for Juneteenth. This is one of the most important celebrations that I do throughout the year, and I look forward to coming back and seeing you all. I am so happy watching you grow, learning about all of your wonderful efforts to make it through the pandemic of last year. Would you please give yourselves a hand? Well, we are here virtually uh, through the President uh, George H.W. Bush uh, Presidential Library and Museum. And during this time, we always honor President Bush and First Lady Barbara Bush. We give honor and, and gratefulness to all of the staff, from the technicians to the janitors to the essential crew that kept things running and stayed in communications with you throughout this difficult past year. I am Oba William King. Yes, I am your storyteller. I just almost took it for granted that, oh, they already know my name. But I should always say it so that you guys know um, I am Oba. I am a storyteller currently working now with the Texas Commission on the Arts. And if there's any information that you ever want to find about me, you just write it into Google search. Oba William King. All of my details are there. I'll be performing around Texas during the next year. So if I can see you in some of those other places, that'll be a ball. Today we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate in the idea, the consciousness of believe. Moving forward. Doing everything that we can to help make the world a better place. Using your gifts. Trying your best. Working hard. Never give up. And uh, our vocalist, Lisa J. Williams White, is here today to perform with us and to sing for you. Now, sometimes you're going to remember some of the songs you hear her singing. Feel free, wherever you are, to sing along. We absolutely love audience participation. So everybody, please give a give a cyber hello to Lisa J. Williams White. Yay! <laughs> Our vocalist for Justice Arts. The ancestors said to play my drum. The ancestors said the human form about a family and some of the choices we make and the consequences we bear. There was a father. The father had a wonderful family, mother, father, sisters, brothers, the entire family was a beautiful family, but there was one thing. No matter how hard the father worked, no matter how hard the mother worked. The children and the family were never ever ever really satisfied. They, they always were fussing and fighting and bickering about something. Little tiny things. It wasn't like they had a lot to do and there were so many of them that they could break up their chores and everyone could do one thing and the chores would be done. But they wouldn't. They would fuss and fight and nag and tattle. It's your turn to take out the trash. No, it's not. It's your turn to take out the trash. No, it's not. I did the window, so I did the lawn. So I didn't do this and I didn't do that because I don't have to because I'm the baby. 
baby. Oh, they would fuss and bicker and fight to the point where the father, he had enough. One night after he arrived home, he came in and hugged his wife. He says, I'll be back. And he went out in the field behind their house and he found a tree that was, you know, shedding its limbs and he picked up several of the sticks that had fallen from the tree. And he carried those sticks, small branches, into the house and called all of the children, Come, children, come! And his family came and they gathered around. They stood there in their normal, organized stance. Yes, Father, yes, Father, yes, Dad. Yes, Father, yes, Father, what do you want, Dad? As he looked in the eyes of each of his children, he gave them one of the small branches he'd taken that had fallen from the tree. Here. Each child soon had one of the branches in their hands. He looked at them all and said, Now, I want you to break the stick you have in your hands. Break it. Break that branch. Each child was able to take the branch that they had because he passed them out according to the size of the children and they broke the branch. One after the other after the other, no problem at all. And there they were holding two branches in their two little hands. Father, he said to the children, I want you to pass the branches from there all the way up to here. So the youngest one is down there. The eldest is here. Pass all your branches up. And they did. And when they all passed the branches up, the eldest brother was holding the branches in his arms. And the father, he took a small cord of rope and he, he wrapped the end of the branches that were in the oldest son's arms and he wrapped it and tied it tight. He wrapped the other end and tied it tight, forming a bundle. He says, now I want you to carry the bundle down to your youngest brother. Give it to your youngest sister. And after that, continue to pass it along. Each of you, when you get the bundle, try to break it. And, and so the kids did. They did what their father told them. And they grabbed hold to the bundle. It was hard for the little ones to get their hands even around the bundle. And as it moved up to the older children, they were able to get it up to And the second oldest brother, he took his knee and tried to put his knee in the middle of it so that it would, it would form a fulcrum and it would bust and break. And he would... Couldn't do it. The eldest son got a hold to the bundle. And try as he might, he was unable to break the bundle. The father sat. The children, with that look on their face, like wondering, what was that all about? The father just said, you see what I'm saying? When you are fussing and fighting and bickering with one another over little tiny things, you're like a small stick that has fallen from a tree. And you're just out there waiting for the world to break you. When you're a family and you're working together, you're like a bundle. And you saw a bundle is very difficult to break. I want my family to be a bundle. He reached for his wife. Mother smiled at all of her children. And the children came in for a great big group hug. <gasps> the Oh, oh, freedom, oh, oh, oh freedom, oh, oh, oh freedom.
over me. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. A Juneteenth celebration. June 19, 1865. When word of the Emancipation Proclamation made its way to Galveston, Texas, two and a half years after the actual order was enacted, the people of the Galveston, the Galveston area heard first from Major General Gordon Granger. A Granger arrived with his with his group of four colored soldiers, other men in the detachment. And they made their way. And they read what is known as General Order Number Three. It declared that on the first day of January, 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state designated part of a state, the people whereof then be in rebellion against the United States shall then be thence forth and forever free. President Lincoln's proclamation would have very little impact on Texans at the time of 1863. There's a small number of Union troops that were available to enforce the order. Many ignored it. Those who held the Africans in bondage ignored the order. More than 2,000 federal soldiers of the 13th Army Corps arrived in Galveston. And with them, Major General Gordon Granger, the commanding officer for the District of Texas. Granger's men marched right through Galveston, reading the general order. This general order was, was apprised of a long, difficult process of negotiation. Frederick Douglass was there. The Congress of both houses, they argued bitterly. So many fears of what would happen if they freed those men that they had in shackles and chains. It wasn't the way they wanted to go. But America was falling apart. The Civil War, whether they produce cotton in the South or, or sugar cane or, or whatever the crops would be, tobacco, but they wanted, most importantly, to keep the Africans captive as a free working force. They would not pay. Very terrible living conditions. And Frederick Douglass said, if you want to save lives of Americans, you must end this war. And the best way to end this war, free those held in bondage and allow them to fight for liberty. And they did. It's written into the Constitution, a decision made by both houses. 
Mm-hmm. They've all been held in bondage hell from that point forward. The ever, ever recognized as free. Freedom is a beautiful thing. And as we continue to move forward, we hold freedom precious. We hold freedom as a gift. We hold freedom that America has promised all of its citizens. So we work diligently to keep this very fragile society secure. Our country together we're stronger we must believe and move forward my country tis of the sweet land of liberty of the I see land where my father died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring, let freedom ring, let freedom ring. This is the art of storytelling. When we have a gathering of people coming together, we use stories and folk tales to help show our similarities. To help show that in every culture and every community, there are stories. Stories with morals and stories with empathy, stories with pride and stories with history. And we utilize these stories to share with one another because the more you know about me and the more you share about you, the better off we all are together. We lessen the fear of the unknown. Storytelling is so important in our communities. We can teach lessons through stories. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. First Lady, Ms. Barbara Bush, as we continue to celebrate, commemorate, acknowledge Juneteenth. And that little song that our dear friend Ms. Lisa began singing, This Little Light of Mine. That's a song that everybody in this room knows. Uh, you've sang it at Sunday school. You've sang it in camp. You've sang it at school. So everyone, wherever you are watching from, you know these words. Now, you know I love to do things that people have never done before. So we're going to have a big old choir from everybody 
all over the world who is listening. We're going to start up. Miss Lisa going to lead. And we're all going to sing this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Now, <laughs> your job is to sing louder than Mr. Over. Because Mr. Over really can't sing. No. I just make joyful noise. <laughs> so, sing your hearts out, children. Let's go, Miss Lisa. This little light of mine. Yeah. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, yeah. This little light of mine. Yeah. I'm going to let it shine. What? This little light of mine. Yeah. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All in my home. All in my home. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. All in my home. Let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. Come on, come on, come on. All in my home. All up in my house. I'm going to let it shine. Yeah. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine. No matter where I go. Everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. Yes, I, yes, I. Everywhere I go, up or down or all I'm around. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm just gonna let it shine, and it's gonna sparkle through my teeth and my <laughs> eyes. And when you look at one another, you see the light that is within. And when you see that light, when you see that light, you know that's a friend. So we're carrying this light with us. I wrote a book about it. You want to hear it? Here, here it go. But once upon a time, there was a little tiny star. She fell from there and landed here. She lost her light and did not know where to find it. She looked around and looked around, but she couldn't see her light, and she began to cry. Well, a teeny tiny, itsy bitsy. Firefly was fluttering by. The firefly saw that little teeny tiny sippy baby star. Uh oh, what's the matter, friend? I don't know," said the little star. "I lost my light, and I don't know where to find it. Cause I fell from there, and I slipped and tripped, and I landed down here, and I missed my mommy." When when? Oh, don't cry, don't cry. Look, I will help you. That teeny tiny itsy bitsy baby star just jumped up on the firefly's back. The firefly began to flutter his wings and he flew all the way over to a wide, very, very deep, very, very dark river. There at the river, just when he arrived, he told that little star, said, close your eyes. Take a deep breath, make a wish. And the teeny tiny itsy bitsy baby star, she closed her tiny eyes. She, she took a deep breath. She, she made a big wish. She said, open your eyes wide. When she opened her eyes, she looked and she saw the reflection of the moon in the water. <laughs> oh, joy. I see the light in you. See what's up. I see the light in you. And the water was doing what water does. Yeah, the river was flowing. The, the river was waving. The, the river was, was, was foaming. The river, it made an echo and it said, I see the light. Yeah, you. Okay, be the river. Be the river. Be the river. Everyone be the river. I see the light in you. Just like that, the teeny tiny itsy bitsy baby star was smiling. The firefly said, come now. We go. 
the firefly took that teeny tiny itsy bitsy baby star all the way over to a wide open field there. In the middle of that wide open field, she saw all kinds of people. The people were gathered from everywhere and the people were holding hats, standing in a circle. It was a great fire rising higher and higher in the middle of the circle. Some had instruments and they were playing their instruments. They were playing their instruments, their guitars and their drums. Somebody had a harp. They were playing their instruments and she listened closely and she could hear them sing. I see the light in you. You see you the light, see in, the light me. in me. I see the light in you. You see the light in me. Together we shine. Together we shine. Oh, joy. She was so happy. Firefly said, come now, we go. Firefly took that teeny tiny itsy bitsy baby star and carried her all the way over to the tip top of an old oak tree. The branches of the oak spread out so wide, touching the ground and reaching the sky. As she climbed that old oak tree, she told that teeny tiny itsy bitsy baby star, she said, look up. And when that little tiny itsy bitsy baby star looked up, <laughs> she saw her mommy and her daddy. Her aunties and her uncles, her sisters, her brothers, and all of her friends, they were there waiting. And she listened, she could hear them. They were singing. I, I see, see the light in you. You, you see, see the light in me. me. I, I see, see the light in light you. you. You see the light in me. Together we shine. Together we shine. You see, all that love that came from above, it lifted that teeny tiny itsy bitsy baby star right up off the fireflies back. Higher and higher she rose. And as she climbed up in the sky, you heard the voices of her parents and friends, her brothers, her sisters, her aunties, her uncles, her sisters, her teachers, her librarian, singing. I see the light in you. You see the light in me. I see, I see the light in you. You see the light in me. Together we shine. Together we shine. Yes, y'all. The firefly and little star we were just like those thousand points of light that President Bushy spoke of the way that they lived their lives so that they would see the light in one another and that we'd use that light as our guiding post that we understood where we're going and what we're going to do with our lives. One of these mornings I'm gonna wake up Once on a time in a place far away, where the grass was green, the sky's blue, and that lucky old son had nothing to do but roll around to heaven all day. In this place, there were a beautiful people. 
the people, the, the, the people carried themselves in the image of the great bird, the eagle. The eagle that soared high above those tops of trees. Uh, the male eagle would rest himself upon a mountain, a cliff, overlooking the people. And when the people walked on the earth, they looked up at the beauty of the eagle and carried themselves that way. Proud, majestic, honorable. The mother eagle had the responsibility of teaching the children, the young eagles, the fledglings, those who did not yet know how to use their magnificent wings, those who did not yet know how to nourish themselves, those who did not yet know who was friend or foe. By the time one of the little tiny eggs within the nest began to shudder and shake, and pretty soon that shell, it did break, and out poked the head of a little tiny eagle. The little girl eagle, she looked about and she, she could see there was her mother who she thought was asleep. The mother eagle had gotten so weak until she slept that sleep that seldom ceases. The next little egg began to shudder and shake. And pretty soon that shell, it did break. And out poked the head of the little tiny boy eagle. He looking around. And, and the third little egg began to shudder and shake. And pretty soon that shell, it did break. And out poked the head of one more little boy eagle. As they looked about each other, the first mate making his rounds said to the captain, Captain! Captain! There are little tiny eagles in the belly of the ship. What should I do with them? Well, the captain told that first mate, <laughs> yeah, you take them little tiny eagles. <laughs> you throw them in a chicken bin. <laughs> that way, when they grow up, ha, they'll think that they are chickens. <laughs> oh, he laughed this evil, ugly laugh. And first mate, he took those little tiny eagles and he he carried them over to the chicken bin and he threw them in. The little eagles, they fumbled and rolled on the ground and the chickens came. Point. Kicking dirt. Looking at the little tiny eagles, those chickens said, Ew, y'all is some ugly chickens. Look at you. You got them old brown fellows. Big beaks. Huge feet. What are those? Wings? What you need wings for? Chickens can't fly. Y'all can't fly. Y'all got wings and you just some ugly chickens. And those chickens began to ridicule and tease and, and, and harass and bully the little tiny eagles. Time went by. 
The little eagles would barely eat. They, they never spread their wings. They walked around with their heads hung down. They dragged their feet and time passed. Soon, the men in the boats, they went back to that beautiful land. Back there where the grass is green and the sky is blue and the lucky old sun ain't got nothing to do but roll around heaven all day. Again, they fought the people. They captured the eagle. They captured the great male eagle and they cut his wings. They threw him into the belly of the ship and across those rough and treacherous waters, the ship sailed for 80, 90, more than 100 days. As fate would have it, that ship landed right there at the same place where the little tiny eagles who thought that they were chickens were, they were sold to the same farmer, where the little tiny eagles who thought that they were chickens were. When the gray eagle landed on that farm, he saw those little tiny eagles who thought that they were chickens. He said, come, my brother. Come, my sister. Spread your wings. Fly away. You are part of a great and proud race. You are meant to soar high above the tops of the trees. Through the clouds, right next to that lucky old sun who had nothing to do but roll around heaven all day. Spread your wings and fly away. Well, the little tiny eagles who, who thought that they were chickens were like, what? Are you talking to us? Shh. Be quiet. Don't say anything about being great. Oh, don't say anything about being beautiful. No, no, don't say anything about we matter. Don't say that. We're just some ugly chickens. We don't know nothing about nothing. So you need to be quiet, because right over there is the roosters. And over there is all them chickens. And those chickens, they're going to come over here and they're going to... They will fight us and hurt us and take away our food. And then they're going to tell the roosters, oh, when the roosters come, you don't want the roosters to come. Look. Whoever you are, you need to be quiet around the roosters. The roosters got a bad attitude. They wear their clothes all sideways and the pants all pulled down. And tell them, huh? what you in here talking to my birds for, huh? See, them my birds. You can't do nothing with these birds. But we're the one who teach these birds how to be birds. It ain't got nothing to do with you. So you're going to have to fly their way out of here or be quiet or something like that. And then the roosters, the roosters will jump on you. Be careful. The majestic eagle had never heard anything like that before. The majestic eagle looked at those little tiny eagles. Each one of them, he looked them directly in the eyes. He spread his wings and pumped them against the air. That great eagle rose up off the farmyard, just up to a little tiny fence, not very far, but just enough so they could see him fly. 
Oh, the baby girl eagle. She felt something inside her begin to bubble up and it felt so warm and so great that she could hear her mother's voice in the, the distance of her memory. She said, always believe in yourself. Always try your best to try your best. And when with that, with that memory, with the voice of her mother in her ear, she began to run. She had never even ran before. Just she me. just started to run. She was just running as fast as she could. See what I can she see. ran real fast and then she stuck out her wings. And she began to flap her wings. You see? When she see, she'd never flapped her wings before. She hadn't run and she hadn't flapped her wings. So she didn't really know what she was doing. But she ran so fast and she flapped so hard. She did get up off the ground just a little tiny bit away. And before she tumbled down into the dirt. <laughs> Oh, while she rolled in the dirt, those chickens came and they looked and they laughed and they pointed at her. They ridiculed her. They talked about her. They said, look at you. Huh. Told you you couldn't fly. They looked at her. They said, told you you was ugly. They looked at her. They crowded around and said, now you're dirty. You so dumb. Dumb, ugly, dirty, dumb, ugly, dirty, dumb. And they began to chant. But that's when the miracle happened. It was right I then. Just believe. And that little big girl, Eagle, she, she got I up off the ground I can be. and brushed off her little tiny shoulders. If I just try. The great they Eagle, he saw her try. So, so, so he he spread his wings, pumped them again, where she could see the coordination in his believe. effort, and he pumped his wings and rose if up to the wire, believe. high to a limb on an old oak tree. She saw what he did, and she ran again, and as she ran, she spread her wings. She pumped them in coordination like the great eagle had done. She spread her wings and listened to the voice of her mother. One of these mornings, I'm going to wake, wake up. up. I, I am Fly away home. She pumped her wings. She began to sing. I'm going away. Higher and higher. Fly away. Higher and higher and higher. She rose up. Above the farmyard, the chickens were watching. The rooster, oh. hey, you, you get down from there. You get down from there. Mm -hmm. Higher and higher, her, her mm -hmm. voice soared, mm -hmm. carried around the farmyard. Mm -hmm. Everyone mm -hmm. on the farm, from chickens to cows mm -hmm. to sheep. The goats, they all saw that little tiny eagle learning how to fly. She rose, and her little brother saw her in the air like that. He didn't even have to run. He just struck out his wings, pumped them against the ground, and took off like a rocket ship. I can fly. I can fly. I can fly. 
He soared straight up into the air and began to dance, tilt his wings, and fly about. The great eagle watched. The sister flew. The brother soared. If there was another little tiny eagle down there on the ground, the great eagle looked at him. He said, spread your wings. Fly away. The little brother said, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. And with that, no more singing, no more sound, no more anything. The great eagle could not believe what he was hearing. He looked at that little tiny bird. I, I understand, said the great eagle. I, I, I understand you, you've, you've never seen us fly before. You probably don't believe in yourself. But come, if you don't try, you never ever will. Spread your wings and fly away. I don't want to. I understand. You think if you get up there, you might fall down. I'm here. I would catch you. Spread your wings. Fly away. I don't want to. I understand you've never seen it done before. You don't believe. You've never tried. But if you don't at least try, you never will. Spread your wings. Be as great. As you can imagine that you are. That little tiny boy eagle just shook his head and held it down. The great eagle said, if you don't want to, if you don't want to try, there is nothing that I or anybody else can do to help you come. Spread your wings. Fly away. Go be great. He just shook his head and held it down. Well, the great eagle, he spread his wings and pumped them against the air, and he rose up off of that farmyard. The little tiny girl eagle, she ran like she ran before. She spread her wings and pumped them against the air. She rose up off that farmyard, flying right behind that great eagle, and... That little brother, <laughs> the one that went like a rocket ship, once again, once again, he just pumped his wings against the air, and like a rocket ship, he soared high above the farmyard, looking down on those roosters and chickens. Following behind his sister and the great eagle. Together you could hear their voices screeching out on one of these mornings.
on their way home, headed high up into the sky, where they belong, over the tops of the trees, right next to that lucky old sun, which has nothing to do but roll around heaven all day. But as they flew, something inside that that baby boy would, would not let him leave his brother on the ground. So he tilted his wings, <sighs> soared down close, made it to his brother and reached out his talon, grabbed his baby brother by the chest. Yes, he did. And he, he, he pumped his wing and he flung his brother up into the air. He said, you spread your wings. You learn to fly or die trying. He let that big boy go. He went up, up, up and began to rumble. Well, we ain't like tumble. He began to fumble. Gravity had him. It was pulling him back down to the ground. Instinct and his natural ability caught hold. Stuck out his wings, <sighs> pumped him against the air. <sighs> and began to fly. The great eagle continued flying, so did his sister, and that brother was right next to him, said, Spread your wings, pump them in rhythm, feel your heartbeat. Let's go. Together. There is an old African saying that says, if you want to get there fast, go along. But if you've got to go far, go together. Fly away home. Oh, they flew one of these mornings. I'm gonna wake up. I fly away home. One of these mornings. When I wake up, I'll fly. to that place in our program that we love to get to. Whenever there's a chance for the audience to participate, mm -hmm. call me. I'm going to be right there. <laughs> this has become almost like our little anthem. I love my people. You know when we talk about my people, that's each and every one of us claiming all the people around us are our people. And we love one another. We carry love in our heart. Sometimes we say these words because they are healing words. I love my people. Say it like the children say. I love my people. 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 Hey, good, break us down because we were so brave. I love my people. We kept our pride and proud to fear. 
Without my people, without your people, without your people, without our people, without our people, without these people, without these people, where would we be? Where would we be? Where would we be? Where would we be? Without each other, without each other, where would we be? Where would we be? I love, I love my people. I love my people. I'll say it again. I love my people. I love my people. Somebody say it. I love my people. I love yeah, my people. Yeah. Come on, I love sing my us. people. I love my people. Oh, there we go. There we go. There <laughs> we go. Come on, say. I love my people. I love my people. I love my people. I, I love, love my, my people. I feel people. like James Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Love my people, one another, working together, making the world a better place. We're so happy yeah. to be at the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library, honoring George H.W. Bush and his 
beautiful life, wife, first lady, Barbara Bush, and how we here at the library and museum share, we share the commemoration of Juneteenth. And that's when they gave that order. When it arrived in Texas, stating that all those held in bondage are now free. Freedom, y'all. And we use that freedom in the ways we want. Continue to study, continue to work hard, continue to love one another. Help make the world a better place. Can you do that for me? Trying yes. to make the world a better place. With our stories, our poetry, our songs, our dances, our drums. Bring what you do to the party. <laughs> and then share it with everyone. Watch how many folks will share back with you. I love my people. That's who we are. I love my people. I love my people. I'm going to say these words. You say them back. Are you ready? No matter where we go. No matter where we go. There we are. There we are. We're not just players. We're not just We're the players. shining stars. We're the shining stars. Spread this word. Spread this Both word. Both near and far. Both near and about far. About just how blessed. About just how we blessed. We truly are. We truly are. Take these words. Take these across words. Across the land. Across the Divide land. Divided we fall. Divided we fall. United we stand. But we united we stand. Think about greatness. Think about Your greatness. Your history. Your history. Without my people. My without people. your people. Without, without your people. Without our people. Without, our without people. each other. Without each other. Where will we be? Where will we be?